Welcome to your Detroit Lions news game preview presented by Three Kings Sports Cards and Collectibles in Canton, Michigan. If you're a sports card collector, you might want to go there to get your cards graded. They have all the tools and they have a bunch of cards for sale too. I'm not a card collector, but I know the people that are and it's a great place to go. A lot of fines, just a ton of them. But let's get to this game that we have Sunday between the Detroit Lions and the Carolina Panthers because usually in this, this game preview, I give you a parlay of the day. With all the injuries that we have for the Detroit Lions, I couldn't do that. Brian Branch is out. Jason Kabinda is out. Now, Brian Branch suffered that ankle injury against the Green Bay Packers late in that game. It seemed like it was much more than we thought, but he's going to be held out because it's probably a precautionary reason. Obviously, you look at it in in the the, the next two. Amarad St. Brown is doubtful. James Mitchell is doubtful. Taylor Decker is questionable. Jameer Gibbs is questionable. The weird thing about Jameer Gibbs is that was added to the injury report today. Jameer Gibbs was on the injury report all week long, and then he was magically on the injury report today. That's that's kind of concerning to me. Kirby Joseph is questionable. Emmanuel Mosley is questionable. Julian O'Quarr is questionable. Josh Reynolds is questionable. Vitae is questionable. Jamison Williams is questionable. Now for the Panthers, there's a big there's a big guy that's out. On that Carolina Panthers team, Xavier Woods, he is out. He's a good safety. He has a really, he's just, he's played very well this year. Austin Corbett, who is an offensive lineman, he's out. Steven Sullivan is out. Dante Jackson is questionable. I think that Dante Jackson will play like the questionables on the Detroit Lions. You never know until the day of. You look at that, you look at that injury report. And I, I swear to God, I had to kind of minimize the text on some on the Detroit Lions injury report because I couldn't fit it all in that window. So the Detroit Lions are 10 and a half point favorites. It's the first time in a long time that they've been 10 and a half point favorites. I think the last time they were more than 10 point favorites was against Cleveland. So they are going to go into a game where they are pretty, pretty beat up. Uh, they've been beat up for the most part this whole season. Um, in, in the first part of the season, I mean, you think about no James Houston, no Josh Pascal, they've still been able to get a pass rush. And against this Carolina Panthers uh, offensive line, you will be able to get a pass rush. The person that should have the biggest game is Aline McNeil because Chandler Zavala, who is a rookie from NC State, I really liked him out of NC State. I thought he was going to do a really damn good job. He's allowed the most pressures from a, a guard this season. So if you're looking for a matchup to kind of exploit the Aline McNeil uh, Aiden Hutchinson running up the middle against Zavala could be a huge mismatch nightmare. Let's go to the quarterback matchups because this is interesting. Um, we know Bryce Young, the short man, is uh, is, is going to be playing for the Carolina Panthers. He's averaged 167.7 yards per game. Uh, and Jerry Goss been 257.3 yards per game. Nearly a 100-yard difference. The completion percentage, 65 to 69. Here's where it's, it gets it, – it, it, this is where it gets skewed a little bit. Um, Bryce Young's been sacked 11 times for, you know, in, in, in for 80 yards. Uh, his, he has two touchdowns, two interceptions on the year. Jared Goff, six touchdowns, three interceptions on the year. When you look at this whole quarterback comparison right here, it's easy to see why the Carolina Panthers offense is struggling. Now, let's get to that next. The Let's get to know what Carolina. Obviously, you've seen what their quarterback's capable of. Their offense, points per game, 24th in the NFL. Rushing, 22nd in the NFL. Passing, 23rd in the NFL. There's not much that they do specifically right for the Carolina Panthers. Their defense is pretty good in the pass game. So if you're going to really exploit this team, you're going to run the ball because they give up 136.3 yards per game, which is 27th in the league. They allow 25.5 points in per game, and that is 25th in the league. But if you look at the passing numbers, 176.8, that's sixth in the league. That's a little bit – it's a, it's a weird stat for their point of view. Let's go to the comparisons. Uh, Detroit in points per game, we just went through all that. But the third down offense percentage, they are a good third down um, – pers- uh, they're a good third down team on offense. Um Red zone efficiency, they're not good. So you can get them really stacked up in the end zone. But their defense is really good on third down. Um, if you look at it at the bottom, third down defense percentage, third in the league. That's pretty damn good for a team that is winless. You know, 
like I told you, usually I do a parlay of the day, but if I'm looking at a player that could really exploit the Carolina Panthers, I'm looking at Sam Laporta. I'm looking at David Montgomery. Those are guys that could have huge games Sunday. And if and the reason I held off on my parlay of the day, which I will post um I'll post Sunday. I'll post this Sunday or Saturday, late Saturday. If Jameer Gibbs doesn't go, you know it's going to be a David Montgomery show. And with the way that the uh, Carolina Panthers have struggled to stop the run, I think David Montgomery would do a damn good job. Now, you're probably going to have Zonovan Knight in there as well because if Jameer Gibbs can't go or he's limited, you're going to have a three-running back rotation. And honestly, I think that David Montgomery, is, he's going to be key to it. So if you are uh, if, if you're looking for two players to put in your parlay, if you're looking for two players to bet, you look at Sam Laporta, you look at Dave Montgomery, like I said, but if you want a real kind of X factor, look at what the over-under is for Josh Reynolds and Cleef Raymond that day. Because I think that they could have big days if Amon Ross St. Brown is out. That's the reason that's the reason I didn't do the parlay today. Because if Amon Ross on in there, we don't know how good we don't know how healthy he is so we don't know what he's actually going to do and if he's out that changes the whole entire game plan in my opinion you might be a more run heavy team but i think that they're still going to get some shots downfield and if Khalif raymond was at over under 30 yards i would i would probably take it or maybe josh reynolds is at 41.3 at 41.5 i would take it i would take that in a heartbeat because i think that uh if st brown isn't playing I think you could look at uh, Jared Goff going towards, you know, St. Brown. I mean, uh, going towards Cleef Raymond or Josh Reynolds or Sam Laporta. Will Jamison Williams get runway in this game? I think I told you on the podcast, I told you that I think that they're going to ramp him up. They're not going to, you know, go push him all the way in. So I think they're going to kind of ramp him up. I think over the next couple games going into Baltimore, going into Tampa Bay, um, which I flipped those two, but they're going to go into Tampa Bay. They're going to go into Baltimore. I think they're going to ramp him up a little bit. They just want to get him more practice time. I think that's a major thing because when you are playing the wide receiver position, the one thing that could really throw the whole thing off is if a if a wide receiver isn't on time with this route. And when you got a quarterback like Jared Goff who likes to put in this the one place where the quarter the wide receiver can get it, that can present an issue. Now if you're just running running a couple routes a game, Jameson Williams could definitely be in there. But I just want to see who's active on game day because and who's who who could be added, who could be uh downgraded to out tomorrow. It's like around four o'clock. They could do that. So that's what I'm interested in looking at. I think that if you're going to look at the spread for the Detroit Lions versus Carolina Panthers, it's at 10 and a half. Let me check FanDuel really quick to see um, just to see if this spread has changed anything more than it has. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to log in. But the 10 and a half, I really don't like. I never like going 10 and a half. I, I never like given that many points that's just ridiculous so i'm gonna look at it it's taking me a long time to log into this thing um let's see nfl so right now the detroit Lions are nine and a half point favorites would i take the nine and a half that means you got to win by 10 obviously if you're, you're better um i don't like the 10 to be honest, I th- earlier today it was 10 and a half, so all these injuries might have weighed it, weighed it down. But I don't like the 10 spot. I really don't. I know on our um, our pre- our game picks that, uh, you know, Detroit Lions staff at new staff has done, they, you know, Tyler and Manic, Mayank are, are totally in they, – they think it's going to be a blowout. And I think that if you're being honest with yourself, I think tomorrow could be a, a chance for a backdoor cover because I think that Carolina is capable to score. We've seen it with them, with the Minnesota Vikings. But I think that if they're going to do that backdoor scoring, you know, they can cover that that, that, 10, that 10, um, 10 point spread. So it's going to be interesting. I mean, if you're better, I really would stay away from the point spread. Maybe go down to an alternate point spread. Maybe go six and a half, seven and a half. You're not, you're, you, you might uh, take some money off of it, but if you add some stuff into it, you're going to be good. If you want to just risk it for the biscuit, you can go to 10. Or you could just bet Carolina to cover the spread. I don't like that either, so I would stay away from the game. But 
this is a game that the Detroit Lions should win. There's there's little doubt about that. I think that we're all, uh, you know, just we all think the same thing. They should definitely win against Carolina. There should be no letdown. Obviously, last year, the Detroit Lions lost to Carolina, and that was a major reason that they didn't make the playoffs. They got ran all over. And the guy who is the, the Carolina running back is Miles Sanders. So there's obviously a guy that you respect in that offensive backfield for the Carolina Panthers. This is the Detroit Lions news game preview. I will see you guys after the game. I'll do a game, a post game preview, and we might go live afterwards. So um, stay tuned to us. And if you're on the YouTube channel, Between the Whistles Detroit, please subscribe. We appreciate that as well. And we will see you guys in the next video as we talk about the Detroit Lions and the Carolina Panthers in their post game. Hopefully, we're, we're celebrating another win because. This is getting good, and we will see you guys in the next pack, the next video.